Welcome to Burning Bright, a weekly podcast presenting poetry and prose from Passager. I'm sure you know that Baltimore's Francis Scott Key Bridge collapsed a couple weeks ago after being hit by a cargo ship. We Passagerians are all fine, thank you, but the consequences just keep rippling out. From the deaths of the six people that were repairing the bridge's pavement that night, to the detours and rerouting of traffic, to the indefinite closing of most of Baltimore's industrial harbor, and the consequential loss of jobs, to the loss of tolls and taxes for city and state, to the inconvenience to people all over the country who will have to wait longer for all those cars and farm equipment and on and on that entered the country through the Baltimore Harbor. In short, what a mess. So what do you do when your routine, your world is turned upside down and you have to rethink everything you were used to? We'll start by crossing a literal bridge. When Roy Cheng Tsung was a child, his father moved the family from New York, where Roy had grown up, back to communist China. Here's an excerpt from Roy's book, Beyond Lo Wu Bridge. The bridge was not long. It was a simple structure of wood and concrete with railway tracks. A white demarcation line ran across the middle. There were no modern buildings on the Chinese side. The land looked barren and rural. Behind the Chinese border guards, a five-star red flag fluttered from the top of its tall staff. We were promptly marched off to a small outpost structure near the checkpoint and lined up against the wall. A grim British officer with dark glasses came out and looked us over. Across Lo Wu Bridge stood solemn Chinese guards in olive green. One of them was holding a large automatic weapon with holes in the barrel. An excerpt from Roy Chang Tsung's memoir, Beyond Lo Wu Bridge. Sometimes, even though you're not interested in something new, something new might surprise you. John Glowney's poem, Mom in Florida. Mom isn't so sure Florida is for her. All those bitter Michigan winters. You can buy the ticket, and when the plane touches down, she'll still be bundled in a wool coat, gloves. And when everyone steps out onto the hot tarmac, she still leans a little against the sharp, icy edge of wind slicing across her cheek. She can't put a word to it, the slack, warm air. It is something about lying fallow under snow, the fields of fallen corn stalks churning back down, leaf root, all discreetly returning. When her husband passed, she gave him back, laid his useful body in the hillside cemetery. Here, young girls lay, glistening limbs upon colorful towels, on acres of blasted sand from which you couldn't coax a garden, let alone a lonely green sprout. It's all shops and parking lots. Stroll the boardwalk, buy the kids soft drinks, then sit and watch the surfers far out. The diamond-tipped Atlantic sways her a little, its great heaving flesh reminding her of the wide fields of golden wheat in August. But when everyone is ready to leave, mostly she wants to go back to the hotel and sleep, and so you have to give up and head off to Disney without her while she makes her way to the air-conditioned room where she can't find enough blankets and lies on the bed shivering with something akin to pleasure. John Glowney's poem, Mom in Florida, from Passager's 2007 Poetry Contest issue. And then, after a while, awful as it was, with some distance we gain new perspective. From Passager's 2020 Poetry Contest issue, Penelope Scambly Shots, Report from the Future. I'm the oldest woman in the world. Or make that the oldest human. Men mostly died in the wars. Husbands, brothers, fathers, sons. My last living great-great-grandson died yesterday. A sweet boy. I had thought he was happy until he stabbed himself with a stone knife. The oldest sturgeon alive in the river is only 162. 
She asks about the long before. I recount the bloody years. She believes me. There are a few turtles as old as I am, and some trees. I chat with the trees. They make excellent company. Trees are savvy, and also witty. Walking around is highly overrated, they say. Their great-grandparents once shaded the mammoths. Big, say the trees. Enormo. Mammoth. The trees and I find that joke hilarious. You need a sense of humor to live as long as we have. I survive by nibbling the moon. It grows back. Penny Scambly Shots Report from the Future We'll end tonight's podcast where we began, with Roy Chang Tsung. I reluctantly follow my mother across the bridge. My mother surrendered her passport. It had a red diplomatic cover and bore the Chinese nationalist government emblem. I looked over my shoulder and glanced back at the other end of the bridge. With fist on hips, the grim British officer stood beneath the Union Jack, observing us through his dark glasses. As I stood on the small wooden bridge, I stole one last glimpse of the outside world. To buy Roy Cheng Tsung's book Beyond Low Wu Bridge, subscribe to or learn more about Passager and its commitment to writers over 50, go to PassagerBooks.com. You can download Burning Bright from Spotify, Apple and Google Podcasts, and various other podcast apps. For Kendra, Mary, Christine, Roseanne, and the rest of the Passager staff, I'm John Shore. 